All right, well, let me tell you something. Christmas and Easter are probably the two most hardest sermons to preach. They're so difficult. You know why? Because most often you're hearing the same story about the Christmas story and the Easter story. Just about everybody knows those stories. So it's a challenge. Any pastor will tell you this. And, and I know a lot of pastors, and we all talk about this. We're like, man, where are you going this Christmas? And um, if you've been coming here for any amount of time, I'm always trying to find an angle, something that gives us a new perspective about Christmas or Easter. And I really believe that the word I have today is a word for all of us. Say, th say this to me. Say, no one gets away today. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't getting away today. Listen, you can run, but you can't hide. You can run all the days of your life, but you can't hide from God. God loves you. God pursues you. Are you guys cold? A little too chilly in here? Half the room divided. Unbelievable. The Bible says a house divided will not stand. Okay, can you guys kind of put a mixture of cool and, and heat, please? Because... People can't make up their mind here. But um, I really believe that the message God has for us today is, is going gonna, gonna to affect all of us. I promise you. So pay attention, lean in. But I want to start with this, this comment. How many believe that whole phrase, uh, Jesus is the reason for the season? How many believe that? Right? It's, he's the reason for the season. We've been doing everything Jesus. And, and you know what? It's It's true. It's, it's the right thing. It's, it's, what, it's what we're doing right now, this, this holiday season. But I want to bring you another truth. And this other truth is this, is that you and I are also the reason for the season. Like when you think about it, when God said in John 3, 16, well, let me read it to you. He said, God so what? Loved. Look at this. God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. Look at what a generous father. That he gave his only begotten son anyone who believes in him will not die will not what won't die but will have eternal life i love this because when you read the context of this this story it's not just about you know us celebrating the reason for this season which is jesus god was already planning to celebrate us that we are also the reason for the season it was his plan it was his desire that he would save us, that he would love us, and that we would have eternal life with him forever and ever. And how many want to go to heaven? I would hope so, right? So God's greatest gift on Christmas is eternal life. It's eternal life. But its basis is whether you choose to believe what he's saying or not. And I want you to please understand that today. So the title of my message today, if I were to give it a title, it's called Timeless Hope. And the re reason I called it a timeless hope is because that's the message of Christmas. It's a timeless hope. And throughout our lifetime, we have all been affected by something in our life. And I want you to listen today because it's all going to come together. Every single one of us have been affected by something in our life, whether it's been pain, whether it's been suffering, whether it's been setbacks, whether it's been a bad choice that you made right? Whether it's been loss, whether it's been something that's been so difficult, whether you're dealing with something emotionally, something spiritually, but every single one of us have been affected by life in our lifetime. All of us here in this room, that's why I'm saying nobody gets away with anything today. We're all in this message of Christmas, and I'm going to show it to you. And though it's Maybe, listen, maybe you've had some failures. I, I don't know where you're at right now, but all of us have been affected. And though we've, we've all been affected in our timeline of life, I want you to know something, that God is timeless. And when I came up with this theme for Christmas, I started doing some research on just this word timeless. And it was interesting to find the Webster's Dictionary had all these definitions. Are you ready? Timeless means abiding, ageless. Continuing, dateless, enduring, eternal, everlasting, immortal, imperishable, lasting, ongoing, never ending or changing, undying. And I, here's my favorite one, not affected by time. And that brings me so much 
hope because God is not affected by our timeline. God is not affected by human timelines. God is not affected by anything that's on this earth. And that right there is timeless hope. That was the message of Christmas. That though you have all this pain in this world, that's when you saw this whole dance production, it was all on hope. You know, someone struggling emotionally, internally, spiritually, someone struggling with maybe some kind of brokenness inside, but Jesus is always there to save the day, to rescue people from destruction. And so I love the fact that, that God's not affected by anything in our timeline of life. He's not affected by that. And that gives me hope. So here's a quick little point. Don't ever allow your present time name your future. Never allow that. Even as we're preparing, next week I'm starting a brand new series, and I'm not waiting for 2020. I'm kicking it off next Sunday. It's called See Beyond. Every year God gives me a word for the congregation. Uh, this year was I can, I will, the end. And Latin, I mean, next year, 2020, is see beyond. God wants us to learn how to see beyond. It's 2020. It's the year of vision. It's the year of getting things in order internally in our life. It's the year of reaching further. It's the year of seeing beyond whatever you've been dealing with presently. But don't allow this time to name your future. You cannot let that happen. And you can't be the person that says, well, I can't wait for the new year because this new year, I'm going to have everything new. No, a new you makes a new year, not a new year. You got to get that in your spirit. And so don't ever allow uh, uh, this present time to name your future. And here's why. Because how many know this truth, that time will lie to you? Time can lie to you. I mean, I know that lies can set you back for years. I know people like that. Lies can not only set you back for, you, for years, but lies can confuse your purpose. Lies can fog your judgment. Lies can get you to a place where, where you're distracted and, and you just have no sense of direction. Lies will divide people. Lies can come and steal, kill, and destroy you. Lies bring division. Lies bring separation. Lies cause a lot of damage and why am I sharing this story to you about about uh, Christmas and lies here's why because lies will want to come and steal your true identity that's what happened with Jesus when he was when he was born Satan was not happy with that but let me tell you something this whole thing with with Satan always trying to 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 change God's story He's always been in the picture of trying to bring this, this sense of confusion. And it started back all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. Like, and, and, and here's the revelation. As I was studying, I was like, okay, God, how, how am I going to bring this message so that it makes sense? Well, let's just start with this. Satan, God creates everything perfect. He creates this garden. He creates this earth. Everything was perfect. I mean, it was in perfect condition. There were perfect people, Adam, Eve. Everything was just perfect. But all of a sudden, a snake came in and started speaking and started talking and started dropping lines and seeds of doubt and unbelief. And that's where the enemy started coming in. And so what God created to be perfect was now separated it it made adam and eve be separated from the from the presence of god from the intimacy of god and then what the first adam couldn't do the second adam crushed every single work of the devil and his name is jesus amen his name is jesus and so let's look at this genesis chapter 3 verse 1 through 4 let me show you because every single one of us let me say this don't hate on me it's the truth Every single one of us, including Mauricio Ruiz, right now, right now, you have a lie that is limiting you, that is holding you back right now. Whether you like that or not. For example, right now, some of you have been chewing on a lie that God doesn't love. Or maybe you're, uh, you're thinking or you're dwelling on this lie like, I could never change careers. I'm not smart enough. Maybe you're chewing on a lie that my family's never going to get healed. Maybe you're chewing on a lie that your health is not going to get better. 
Maybe you're chewing on a lie that I'll never be happy in this life. Maybe you're chewing on a life that your current status of what you do for a living or what you have financially, maybe the lie that you keep dwelling on is this is the rest of my life. So every single one of us in this room, including me, and I'm, I'm tell, I'll, I'll tell on me. For example, there's times when I'm doing this church thing, and sometimes I feel like I'm not enough for this. Maybe I'm not meant for this. Maybe this is not really what I should be. Like, but is that the truth? No. no they're what? Lies. They're lies. It's not true. But we're all affected by some form of lie. So listen to me today, okay? Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 4 says, Now the serpent was more what? Crafty. Than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say, this is who's talking to him, talking to her, Satan. Look at this. Satan is now having conversation. Where is the battleground in our life? In between your ears, your mind. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did not say uh, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will. And, and what do lie, lies, lies, lies hurt, don't they? He says, you will not certainly die. This is the devil responding. You're not going to die, girl. What's wrong with you? That's not really what he meant. Come on. You really think God's going to kill you? You really think God's going to whack you? Ah, oh, you had it. He's having this conversation with her and convincing her to exchange the truth for a lie. And he says, you're not going to die. The serpent said to the woman, this, this devil, this enemy, God creates this complete perfection. And he comes in and he twisted the truth of God. Think about it. What, what did he twist? He twisted the fact that, that not only did they have the truth of God, the presence of God, the person of God, the power of God, but he twisted their freedom. Their, their liberty. He twisted their purpose. He completely came to steal, you know, something that was a gift from God from these people. And in verse 13 in Genesis 3, and it says, and then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you've done? And the woman said, the serpent, what? Deceived me. The serpent lied to me, and I ate it. You know, it's like right now you're thinking Christmas. I'm sure a lot of you probably have Amazon and UPS coming to your house like crazy, right? Like in my house, because my wife's already on top of it. She's been like getting all the gifts and everything, but I still start tomorrow. But anyways, <laughs> but like, you know, I'll hear, you know, ding dong. And all I see is like from the window, like this body running, like nonstop. I'm like, what the, you know, and then you, you're like, you, you go out there and there's like packages on the floor, whatever, right? And that's what Satan's like. He's a coward. Not that, not that Amazon's a coward. <laughs> Y'all, don't be crazy. Like, don't start sending me emails like, oh, my God, the pastor said Amazon is a devil. Stop it, you religious spirit, you. Okay, so what happens? They, they, they dump the stuff on the ground, and then they're gone, man. You know, and that's what Satan's like. He comes, and, 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 and he comes, and he tries to cause some havoc in your life, and then he runs. Why? He, doesn't, he can't face it. <laughs> But here's, the, here's the, why am I saying this? Because just like Amazon or any of these other companies, UPS, just because they're delivering a package with your name on it, with your address on it, doesn't mean that you have to sign for it. That's your choice. You choose whether or not you want to sign packages. Well, that's the same thing with Satan. Man, he's always dropping lines. He's always dropping these false testimonies. He's always trying to bring all kinds of chaos to your life. And most often, we can't put the blame on God. We have to go ahead and accept the responsibility and say, you know what? I've been deceived and I keep eating it. Did Adam force the mango in her mouth? Or apple or whatever. I don't know what fruit you guys like. No. She took and ate it. And then Adam shows up and he took and he ate it. Amen. So so what is what is what is what is this verse saying to us? Let me tell you, this is what I believe God is saying to us today. Jesus came to erase the lies and the misconception ideas that we have not only about God, but about who God is to us. He came, Jesus came to erase lies. And let me tell you something, and here's the truth. 
whatever lie you're dealing with right now, okay, whatever lie has been deposited in you, you have a misconception idea of what God thinks about your situation right now. Because think about it. If, if we continue to, to eat these lies, the only reason we keep feeding on them is because we obviously have a misconception idea about who God is and what God can do. And we have created a God that is powerless. But it's not that Satan did that to you. It's that we went ahead and we accepted the conversation that Satan had with Eve and Adam, who now sometimes has with us as we start hearing voices and lies and, and deceit. And, and we start allowing ourselves to just, listen, the Bible says this, you know, it, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And whatever the mouth speaks is what you eat. Are you hearing me? Everybody say Merry Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Some people believe right here in this church and every church in, in America believe that, that God, God has left them. There are people that are sitting in every church that believe that God takes pleasure in their pain. Like there's people that say like, God, don't you see me hurting? Don't you see that I'm broken? God, why have you left me? Why don't I feel? And we go through all the, they're lies. God doesn't leave you. God doesn't forsake you. But guess what? We have an opportunity. We have a choice this Christmas. What if your best Christmas gift this Christmas was to cancel the subscription to every lie that the enemy has sent to you? Like, what if that was the best Christmas gift? What if you said, you know what? I, I'm, so, I'm so done. I'm, I'm so fed up with opening every Christmas. More lies. More lies. No. No, just refuse that. Be like, you know what? No, no more. No, I, I'm going to focus on God's truth, God's love. Because there's people that really believe that God has left them. God hasn't left you. That's a lie. He doesn't leave you. Stop believing the lie. Look at your neighbor and say, stop believing the lie. Yeah. Tell your other neighbor, Jesus came to erase those lies. Yeah. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid... I drank Kool-Aid. <laughs> let me see all my Kool-Aid people. Okay, let me tell you something. If you drank Kool-Aid, you were poor. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, only poor kids drank Kool-Aid. If you were a wealthy kid that drank Kool-Aid, that's probably because you had some poor friends. <laughs> I know this because I would go like some, some, when I was a kid, I would go to like some of my friends' houses that were like, you know, middle class, upper class, and they'd be like, hey, y'all have Kool-Aid? And I, what's Kool-Aid? I'm like, what the? I'm like, okay, then I, I realized, oh, my God, this is a poor man's drink. <laughs> you want to know another poor man's drink? Tampico. <laughs> what's Tampico? Just Google it. Just Google it. Man, if you drank Tampico when you were young, man, that's like fake orange juice. It, it's not. It's never orange juice, man. I'm telling you. It's like feed with orange I don't know. It's just okay. No, but listen. Kool-Aid was basically, was basically trying to help parents, you know, get their kids to drink water. So they figured, you know, well, you know what, let's be creative and let's give them colored water. And so you had cherry, watermelon, grape, banana. Well, you know, yeah, and there were only like maybe I think in my time, I think there were like 25 cents a packet, you know, something like that. And uh, but later on, that. This, this Kool-Aid, which sucks for Kool-Aid, but it got coin phrase. Do you remember that, that whole coin, coin phrase? Don't drink the Kool-Aid. How many remember that? Okay, if you don't know anything about that, let me tell you something. That, that don't drink the Kool-Aid or drinking the Kool-Aid was something that was to reference of something that was so demonic and evil. And unfortunately, Kool-Aid had nothing to do with it. It's just something that was being used to refer to something that was horrendous, that was deceiving, deception. And it's interesting because what happens is this drinking the Kool-Aid refers to this followership. Okay, listen to me. To this followership at its worst. There was a, a guy who was a delusional guru who basically was leading a cult called, uh, well, it was Jim Jones, but it was called the People's Temple. And what this guy did, Jim, he was able to convince people 
with all kinds of lies that, that were so real to them. Listen to me. That were so real to them, he didn't kill them. They were persuaded and deceived to the point where 900 adults committed suicide. Not just 900 adults. 300 children also took their life. I want you to listen to me because you know what? We got to stop drinking the Kool-Aid. The reason they coined phrase stop drinking the Kool-Aid was because this dude, Jim Jones, what he ended up doing, he got this vast amount of, of liquid and he put purple flavor inside of it mixed or um, what's that thing when you, when you uh, mix it? They, there's a word for it. Um, no, 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 no. They, uh, he laced it. He laced it with cyanide. And, and so, and so they, they, they all started taking this and they ended up committing suicide and dying. Here's what I'm saying to you. Lies is laced with Satan's cyanide. Lies will kill you. Lies will destroy you. Lies will separate you. Satan is the lace of cyanide, and he is so crafty. He's so crafty that he starts thinking about, oh, my God, there's a second Adam coming. His name is Jesus. This was during Christmas time. And it was so, so terribly ridiculous that all of a sudden you have this guy named Herod, who was the king of Israel at this time when Jesus was about to be born through Mary, and Herod was now being influenced by the spirit of lies by Satan himself, and Herod was very, very jealous when he started hearing from the wise men that there was a child that was to be born, and that he would be the savior of the world, and that he would be the king of kings, the lord of lords, the alpha and the omega, and he did not like that. Let me tell you something. In the garden... Satan didn't like what God was doing for his people. I love how God went from a place of perfection and then now on his, on his second attempt, you know what he does? He, he allows Mary to give birth to a child in a manger. Now, I know this picture doesn't show it all, but he was born in a trough, basically where animals go and they drink their water, cows and, and at just animals. Just, and you know what that tells me? God says to you and I, he's like, yes, I started, when I started the world, I created a perfect world. And then Satan came and he brought destruction and he destroyed and he separated and he lied and he divided us. He, but now God's like, I love you so much that, that I'm willing to allow my son who is a king, who is royalty, to be born in this little manger where animals feed. And I'm willing to go ahead and allow my son to be in this place. And I believe that every message of the Bible has a story behind it. It has a deeper meaning. You know what I believe what God is saying to us? You can't be in the worst mess of your life that God can rescue you. You can't be in the most dirt of the dirt, dirt, dirty thing in your life that Jesus can't... I really believe that God did that on purpose so the whole world would know that I don't need you to be perfect. Sometimes people think in churches, well, let me get my life right. Then I'll come to God and I'll start serving God. Let me tell you something. You don't have enough strength. You don't have enough wisdom. You don't have enough understanding. You don't have enough intellect to get your life right. You get with God and God will make your life right. His love will compel you to get it right. Are you hearing me today? Matthew 2, hurry up. Let's get out of here. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and he found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me. Then, then I can go and worship him too. Liar, liar, pants on fire, right? And then Herod, after, after the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. And the star they had seen uh, when it arose it went ahead of them, and it finally stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, look at this. When they saw the star, they were filled with what? When they finally saw the star, they were filled. So many of us, sometimes we think that vacation is going to fill you. You think that presents are going to fill you or fulfill you. 
Listen, I love all the Christmas, the presents, the giveaway, the, you know, see everybody's face mount. But let me tell you something. There's no one that can fulfill you, and there's no one that can fill you with great joy but Jesus. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They were filled with joy. Look at this. And the wise men went to the house, and there they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped him. And then they opened their treasures. Look at that. They opened on Christmas. They opened their treasures. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. They opened their treasures. And it says, and they gave him uh, gold and frankincense and, and mirth, but God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. Let me tell you something. When you come to the light, the Spirit of God will give you discernment. So they returned to, to their country on a different road. And when the wise men had left, Joseph had a dream as well. In the dream, an angel of the Lord appeared to Job. He said, get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you to come back. Herod is going to search for the child. He wants to kill him. Let me tell you something. Satan tried his best to kill God's dream in the beginning. And Satan tried his best once again to try to kill the timeless hope on Christmas. But this time, the Spirit of God, the light of God, the star of God said, not today. Not today. I want you to know something. When you think about the star, like why was the star so bright like why was i mean there was many stars the bible says but one star god chose one star to be super lit how did he do this well he used astronomy and uh, is it astronomy astron yeah astronomy right and and he and and here's what happened this one star if you study it god placed the star as close as possible to the sun and when the sun the sun sun hit the star it made it literally just ah just blare with brightness and it's interesting because the bible says that the wise men were given a sign by god and the sign was okay you just look for that star and follow that star and that star will lead you to the presence of jesus stay with me so the sun so i mean the sun is is the is what was giving the light okay then they were that, that, that light, that star was giving them direction. That light was giving them clarity. That light was giving them focus. That light was giving them vision. And as they finally got to Jesus, as the light hovered over the child, over Jesus, here's what happens. Now they're in front of the sun, the S-O-N. And let me tell you something. As I read this story, it wasn't until they were in the presence of the Almighty Son, the child, the Son of God, that God began to reveal to them the truth. When you get in the presence of God, God will reveal the truth to you. God will set you free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. But it happened when, we got, when he, they got to the presence of him that the Spirit of God began to tell the wise men, don't go back to Herod. And the Bible says, and the wise men went a different road. See, right now, maybe you're on the wrong path, right? Right now, maybe your lie is on the wrong road. But guess what? God can speak to your spirit man right now. And God can give you clear direction on what next step you need to take. And God can take you from a place of destruction to a place of healing. From a place of being lost to a place of being restored. Amen. God is just looking to speak to some people today. God is saying, will you have ears to hear my truth? Because it's my truth that can make you free. It's my truth that can set you free. It's my truth that can bring you a word in season right now in this Christmas season. Lies will distract you from the truth. Herod was lying to these guys. I'll worship with you. No, you won't. Be careful because the devil will go worship with you too. Yes or no? Don't get all religious on me now. He'll sing hallelujah with you. But I love this because he's timeless. God's not affected by man's plans. God's not affected by man's time. God's not affected by man's lies. As a matter of fact, God says this. He says, I'm not a man that I should lie. God's not affected by any of this. 
None of this. I love this. You guys remember that song by Bette Midler? You know, as you hear Christmas songs, you hear a lot of songs on the radio. But there's a song, and we're going to try to sing it right now. It was a beautiful song. It was a heartwarming song. I'm not trying to hate on her, okay? Awesome song. It gives me, like, butterflies when I hear it, okay? It's awesome. It's so cute. It's amazing. But do you guys remember the, the line that says, from a distance, God is watching you or watching us? Do you guys remember that? How many remember that song? From, okay, let's sing it. Ready? One, two, three. From a distance, God is, okay, we suck. I've been trying this. Jeremy, all day I've been trying this. Not one service has got it. Maybe the next service will get it, y'all. But no, listen, he, she, she, she wrote it, and it's beautiful. This is a beautiful song, okay? But it's not theologically correct. Listen, God, God is not watching us. I'm going to say that again. God is not watching us. I'm going to say it again. God is not watching us. How many are a little concerned right now? Let's go. Let me show you. Matthew 1, verse 21. Don't, don't check out, okay? If you got offended, don't. Stay, stay connected. Look. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name what? Because he will what? From what? And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him what? Which means what? So God is not watching us. God is with us. When you were sick in the hospital, God wasn't watching you. God was with us. When you were standing at a gravesite hurting and broken like I've been, God wasn't watching me. God was with me. When your children went astray, when your children were at that point of getting lost and just blitzed out of their mind and you were lonely, broken, hurting, you were depressed, you were anxious, God wasn't watching over you. God was with you. God is with us this Christmas. He's not watching us. He's with us. He loves us. We have to make a decision to accept that truth. God is with me. You, you, you may have been, been in a place where you've been depressed and you're thinking, man, God has abandoned me. No, God says I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I love you. We have to think about that this Christmas. God is with us. He is Emmanuel. Not God watching us. When you were at that place of not, not knowing how you were going to pay the bills, how you were going to pay the rent, when you were at that place when you lost your job, when nothing was working for you, but God was with us. The, listen, you sitting here today shows you the mercy and the grace and the love of God. The fact that you get to sit here today in service and worship the King of Kings. How awesome is that? It can be a lot worse, but it's not. You're here today. Come on, give God a bigger shout of praise for that. Yeah, we have to. This ain't hype. Oh, this is Jesus. Jesus is how God loves. Jesus is how God heals. Jesus is how God forgives. Jesus is how God saves. Jesus is how God can redeem someone's life. Jesus is how God can restore you. Jesus is how God can save you. Outside of that, you're lost. Jesus is the reason for the season, but so are you. But so are you. John 14, 6 says this, Jesus answered and said, I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. The greatest gift you can receive, if you're hearing me today and you don't have a personal relationship with God, the greatest gift you can open today for your life, for eternity, is salvation. You want to be in heaven one day? I hope you do. I hope you want to be in heaven one day. But the only way to heaven is through the way, the truth, and the life. And his name is Jesus. Listen, good people don't go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. Rescued people go to heaven. Forgiven people go to heaven. God loves good people. But at some point, those good people need to come back to the truth and say, you know what? I need to accept what God is saying in this word. He says, if you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth, I'll save you. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that in a minute. And I love this because, you know what? God loved us so much that he came in the flesh. He came in the skin. He could have said, listen, this is God. Do you think he has to do anything for us? No, he doesn't have to do anything if he doesn't want to. But God loved us so much. He didn't send his assistant. 
He didn't send an angel. He didn't send an ambassador. You know who he sent? He sent his only begotten son, Jesus. You know why? That's how much he loves you. He came down from heaven to earth just to meet with you. That's love. I love this. All throughout the Bible, you see Jesus was always visiting people that didn't believe in themselves. Always. The woman at the well. Remember that girl? She's right there at the well. Jesus comes like, I'm thirsty, girl. Can you give me a cup of water? And she's like, Psh, what do us Samaritans have to do with you Jewish people? And she had an attitude and everything, right? And, and Jesus, Jesus is so smooth. He says, hey, girl, uh, where's your husband? She's like, I don't got a husband. He's like, you're right. You got five, girl. <laughs> and she was like, oh. See, why, why is that? Because when you come in the presence of Jesus, Jesus will reveal to you the truth. You can be living a lie, but Jesus will reveal the truth, not to expose you, but to heal you. He healed that woman. He, did, he didn't put her on blast. He healed her, restored her, delivered her, and then she became the biggest evangelist of that city. She led so many people to Jesus Christ. Jesus was always about the underdog too. Think about it. Listen, society sometimes will excommunicate you. Society will excommunicate people, get rid of people. We remember the man that was bound in the, in the cave. Do you remember him? When he was completely filled with demons and, and he was crazy. Listen, maybe you're in a place where you feel like you're tormented crazy. That man was tormented. Nobody can deal with him. So they chained him up, put him in the cave, left him there to die. Then Jesus shows up on the scene and then the demons see and they run out thinking they're going to attack Jesus. They're like, whoa, what, are, what do we have to do with you? And then Jesus cast out all that spirit of fear, that spirit of doubt, that unbelief. He took out every single demon out of that man's life. He healed him right there. The man was so touched. He said, let me go with you. He said, no, go tell your story now. See, he was always about the underdog. I'll tell you what else. Jesus loved to have lunch, dinner, and breakfast with sinners. Yeah. How many like the IRS? I didn't think so. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus hung out with tax collectors. And the haters were hating. His own disciples were like, why are you eating with him? Remember when he was eating with, um, there was Levi, who's a tax collector, Matthew, was a tax collector. Man, they were hating on him. You know what? Let me tell you something. Jesus loves you no matter how far, how jacked up you are. He loves you. He wants you. He desires you. He does not quit on you. He is timeless. He is never changing. He is ongoing. He is continually loving you, pursuing you. Nothing stops him. Nothing changes him. He is grace. He is mercy. He is forgiveness. This is our God on Christmas. Are you hearing me? And he says this, Ephesians 3 says, verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. I'm already done. Through faith that I pray that you being rooted, being what? Rooted. You're either rooted in lies or a lie. Remember I said every single one of us right now, we're being dealt with one lie right now in our head. Everybody. But we got to be rooted in, in Christ. He says, that he would establish us in what? Love. Many, that we may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of what? Christ. In other words, he's saying, how long is God's love? I'll tell you how long it is. It lasts forever. That's how long it is. Let me tell you something. Human love is temporary. Have you ever been loved by supposedly people? Then they stop loving you? Like what the... I thought I was everything to you. Here's the truth. That's human love. Human love is temporary. God's love is eternal. That's how long his love is. You may ask, how wide is his love, Pastor? It's so wide that he can reach you from the east to the west. Man, God can reach any single person right now on planet earth. You can be in Africa right now. You can be in China, Japan. You can be anywhere on this earth. You can be out on a boat in the ocean. You can be floating with a floating device at the ocean. God is so wide. His love is so big. He can reach anyone, anywhere, no matter how far you think you are from God. God can reach you today. Isn't that good news today? No matter how jacked up you can be, God's like, I can reach you. 
Well, how high is his love, Pastor? I'll tell you how high. His love is so high that he can overlook all the mistakes you've made. He, he can overlook your sin, but don't get it twisted now. It's not, oh, I'll just overlook what you did. No, it's, it's I'll, I'll overlook what you did when you come to my presence and you allow me to help you now and to heal you because here's the truth. If in order for God to overlook your mistakes, your failures, your sin, here's the only way, humility. You know why? Because humility says, I'm not God, you're God. Pride says, I got this. Pride says, this is what I believe. That's pride. You keep believing that. Tell me how that's helping you. Tell me how that's working for you. Tell me how that's changed. How are you feeling? I'll tell you how you're feeling like crap. Empty. Drained. Exhausted. Confused. But you come to the light. You come to the star. Even if you brought yourself into darkness, guess what? Look up because the star is shining bright today. And he's saying, come, come. My light will be over you. I will heal you. I will restore you. How deep is his love? It's so deep that if you were in the deepest pit of your life right now, God's hand is not short. He'll stretch that hand out down there in that pit, and he'll put his hand right under you, and he'll lift you up on high, and he'll overlook even that stuff right there. That's how deep his love is. His love goes so deep that he can heal you, restore you, cleanse you. God can do big stuff. Amen? That's what he's saying in this verse. Christmas is about, for God so loved the world. He gave us timeless hope. But Jesus also says, I empower you. I enable you to respond to me. You have a choice today. You're either going to accept God's truth, God's love, or you're not. I know there's some of you here. Today, you're sitting here. You've struggled with God. You've struggled with faith. And let me tell you something. I've, I've been around a lot of people in my life, 23 years of walking with God. Most people struggle with their faith because of people. Let me ask you this. What did God do to you? Uh, yeah. No, it was people. You had a bad experience with a Christian. You had a bad experience with the church. You had a bad experience with some, and then you let that get you completely just bitter and angry let me tell you something a church building is not your savior Jesus is your savior leadership is not your savior Jesus is your savior people aren't your provider Jesus is your provider we got to come back to that truth we got to come back to Emmanuel God with us please bow your head close your eyes let's go Father, I thank you for every single one of us because we've all been affected by a lie. Everyone here, Father. And I want you all to please listen to me. Take that one lie that you've been just chewing on. Take that Kool-Aid, whatever it is, and stop it. And just say, God, this Christmas, I'm going to stop believing the lies. This Christmas, I'm choosing you, Jesus. I'm choosing to get in your presence and just to believe you. I'm not trying to believe, man, I'm trying to believe you, God. I want to believe you. I need you. And so, Father, as we are thinking about that one lie that we've just been chewing on and drinking and chewing and drinking and subscribing to, we end that now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, give us enough discernment. Give us enough wisdom. Holy Spirit, not just prepare us to be able to say no to the lies that keep stealing and robbing time from our life. 